Welcome to Blobby's Pit, where we plumb dun, the depths. Dun, dun. Hello, hello, hello. We got Very Chef good. Shaba here. Chef Shaba, excellent streamer, excellent competitor. We're talking about competition today. I'm a little less orange in real life. <laughs> yes, true, true. I wanted to talk about competition with you because of the recent arena competition that we both were involved in um, Cosmic Camo, really great member of the community, periodically puts on Hearthstone Arena competitions. Shout out to Camel. Shout out to the to the big Camel in the sky. And Chef Shaba placed first in this competition, and I tied for a second. So I figured we'd be like a good power combo to talk about it. Uh, do you want to give like a brief recap of your experience of that competition? Yeah, so, um, so well, from the start, he had told me about the, the tournament. We had played the last one, and um, the last one I had had some unfortunate things happen during the event. Um, so I had bad internet connection in my old place, and I kind of got discouraged, like, for the last event. But this one um, was, I was in my new place, which is what I'm in now. And it really uh, motivated me to want to like try again. So uh, coming into it, I had seen. I think I was one of the one of the last people to actually go for placements, and uh, I had seen that I needed like a seven point six or so. It was something high, and I was like, ah, oh, like okay, let me do it. And um, I took two decks that should have gone twelve to seven because of opponent's decks just being better. And this was still like more towards the beginning of the meta. So um, it was also very, it was also very like unpredictable, I guess you could say. There's still a lot of like new things um, that we're, everybody's still figuring out. And then I uh, I hopped off and I hit a 12, like I hopped off stream and I hit a 12, but it didn't count towards the win count. And then uh, I, I seen that Cosmic Camel had said something about like, I had like a misunderstanding of the rules and that you had to like actually, I had to finish basically within like eight hours before I was about to go to sleep. So, uh, and my girl's right here, she could tell you, but I ended up just pulling an all-nighter and I was able to pull out like a a seven something, like a seven point seven or something like that, like seven point seven or seven point eight. And uh, I had one run in there that was, uh, that was like, it was like, it was like a technical run or something that was either done like before the time finished or after the time finished or something whatever it was it was like a technical issue that he allowed me to drop because he allowed like other players to drop extra runs so that's what ended up boosting my average i think it was like an extra run that i played because i was over the average and then he like accepted somebody else so then they ended up being higher than me so i played like another run to try to like be higher than them which i thought was like kind of unfair because he had set a specific time and that's why he basically right. let me in so long story short from that uh i got in the finals experience was uh it was beautiful like i had i had good decks consistent decks um i felt like i played well and my last run specifically uh i felt like i was able to kind of just like relax and i remember getting raided by um Redbeard, shout out to Redbeard. And uh, my last run really just felt like, that was the run you watched. It was like the Paladin run. It really just felt like I can just vibe and have fun. And I didn't have to like go all out because being ahead already, it was like a, a big, big like pressure reliever. So I really kind of liked the way that it finished. Um, I had a lot of pressure for the first and second run because I believe I was the first person in finals to do a run. So it was kind of like, uh, it was kind of a lot of a pressure because you're setting the tone, you know? 
So I set the bar really high and I and I got uh I got rewarded with a lot of stuff. But that was my overall overview. Um I love the tournament though, love camel. Um I love that these tournaments exist. You know, we need we need more of these, especially organized from Blizzard, but yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, that's again, but... not gonna happen, but yeah, so yeah. these are like semi-official sanctioned events and this particular competition, and just in case anyone's not familiar with Hearthstone Arena, you build a deck, the best you can get is 12, and 7 is like infinite, it's like a, a minor goal. And when Shaba's talking about getting like 7 point, what did you say, 7.6 I had a 7.6 over like 5 runs, I think. Getting a 7.6 average is... I mean, not many people on the planet can do that in a tournament setting because for most people, the average is three wins. You go three wins and three losses, and, and it evens out that way. So this competition in particular drew way more people than was expected. I think around 50 competitors. I think 51 or 52 and people, yeah. it was originally going to be a certain number of people in the finals, I think a dozen. And, and it, it was exciting. however many runs you wanted to do to try to get a good average. And Cosmic decided at the last minute to add a couple of more people to the finals because of how many people entered. And I think you and I, Shabo, were both on the cusp to be cut. And then we got yeah. that second breath of life to go into the finals. And then we ended up on top. So like a little bit of an underdog <laughs> narrative. Yeah. There. I um, love that. Yeah. And, you know, I want to zero in a little bit on what you said about getting calm in the final run. Because I also had a bit of a rough start to the event, and I thought I would be out of it. But at a certain point in competition, you can hit this... It's like a flow state, right? The flow Where state, yeah. you achieve some sort of peace. You're thinking <clears throat> and you just clearly. operate. Um, do you want to talk more about that feeling? Yeah, so the flow state uh, was definitely what I hit in that last run. I think when I think about my flow state more, I think I re I relate it more to my performance. Though when I'm at like my peak flow state, I think I perform at a point where I'm out of body, performing at a level that's like, how is this guy even doing this? I don't think I really hit my flow state in that level in my last run. I think I more hit a state of uh, like just like an autopilot state, more or less. I didn't think too heavily into each turn. I didn't like analyze every single out they could have. I more or less was just playing cards and enjoying my time. And I was in the flow state in that in that sense. But I would say like more in like my 12 and 11 win runs, I was definitely more in like a flow state where I'm playing like out of my mind. Like I'm reading chat here and there, but I'm really just I'm in there. I was I was zoned in. Uh, but yeah, for people don't, that don't know what the flow state is like, I think that's about the peak of professional gaming. That you can, if you can train yourself to be able to access that part of yourself in a competition, you will be successful a lot of times. Because just in my experience of competitive gaming throughout my life, uh, your number one enemy is yourself. And the more that you allow your feelings, your anxiety, your overthinking to hurt you, it's going to hurt you in a competition and when you hit flow state you don't think about those things you're just you're just doing you're just executing you're just you're doing and that comes through practice you know just being in a scenario over and over and over and over again when you're in that scenario again you've been there before so like you're not you know it just becomes natural and that's what flow state is it's, it's a feeling in you that's just natural just comes to you naturally yeah comfort in your skin or something like that yeah um and by the way we've got chat here on the side y'all can feel free to comment and and ask questions as we go but uh yeah so you know i 
uh, I tend to do well in competitions. I, I've built up a little reputation for... I think I picked up two first places, and now I have a second and a fifth place or something like that. Yeah, you're ki you were killing it. And I I've thought about, like, why that is, because it's not, like, on balance, I am better than a lot of the other competitors in these things. And something I've noticed happens a lot is some of these competitions, people jump out to a huge lead. Like, they have some amazing runs. Um, they're, they're set to go. But especially if the competition takes place over the course of a week or so, or even longer, I feel like I have been able to see folks get in their heads more and more as time goes on. It's this feeling that creeps up. It's like a tension. It's like, I have to do good, like a clenching, like I have to do good. I got to grit my teeth and this, if this runs not good, you know, I got to force it to be good. And when you're trying to <sighs> impose your will onto things that are sometimes out of your control, I think that that plays into what you were saying about you being your own worst enemy rather than letting things flow through you. And I I imagine that I can get to that place in competitions because of my like theater and performance background. Because you gotta kind of just be present and take what comes in that sense. And I think you've gotten there from a lot of competitive gaming background. It's interesting those two different paths bringing us to a similar place. Yeah, a lot of... Um... A lot of gaming is relative to other things and I say quote unquote real life um, because gaming could be considered so. But okay. um, I would say like uh, actually a while back, I would say maybe about like a year ago, I was going to start a blog relating the different things that correlate directly from IRL scenarios or just IRL to uh to gaming and just an example for hearthstone because we have hearthstone viewers is like hearthstone has taught me to be patient and taught me to be patient outside of hearthstone it's taught me to be like patient in real life because there's so many times in hearthstone where for example how like i played the wrong card you know if I had just been more patient, I may not have made a mistake. And when you take that at face value in real life, there's so many times where if you had just had been patient, you may not have made a mistake. You know, maybe I could have waited an extra 10 seconds at a green light and dodged somebody from running a red light and saved my life because I was a little bit more patient. You know, so it's just like things that relate like that from gaming to irl there's a lot of of that that people don't really see because they don't game on the level that i've gamed at and i don't blame them like there's things in life that i may see like mm, i would say like your artwork is a good example there's things in your artwork i'm sure you notice or that you see or you have a different lens to it that i may not see because i'm not like at your level as an artist you know, so you might have an understanding for art and artwork and a vision for it that I can't understand just because I haven't been in your shoes. So I think that gaming has that. Um, it has that narrative to it. And a lot of just people in general who don't game on that level, they don't see that narrative. I think a lot of people just see a video game as like a waste of time or they just see it as something you just do when you're bored or. You just hop on, get out of work, hop on the game, whatever. But, you know, I've always had a a little bit of a different vision to it. But, yeah, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from it. And um, the more that you're in it, the more that you're doing it, just the more comfortable things come, you know. Like, if you've been in theater for, like, 10, 15 years, getting on a stage in front of people is probably, probably nothing. I mean, as levels go up and you become to to um, <clears throat> fill in bigger theaters and have larger audiences, I'm sure you're going to get some form of anxiety. But you always default to your roots that like, hey, I've been here before. You know, I've done similar things. You know, let me just get out there and execute. 
Yeah, it's um, it, it could still be scary, but there's something that lets you not. The the pressure doesn't get to you so much if you're if you've got the experience and you're at ease. Um, I, I'd love to hear about your history with competitive stuff, like growing up. You know, what was your what were your introductions to competitive? either gaming or if, if there was some non-gaming competition, anything you could think of? Yeah. Um, well, it's a lot. It's a lot. I've been gaming for about 25 years. I'm 28. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Wait, what was your first, gonna... what was your first like intense gaming love when you were like three? My first one would have to be like, like Mario Party, yeah. Mario Kart, <laughs> well, and like something uh, like that. So Mario Party is interesting because there's so much randomness. But did you get super into it and competitive and like? You know, I'm I'm be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not like some three year old phenomenon. I was really <laughs> I was really bad. Sure, at, sure. At, it was more or less just like I knew how to work your controller. That's you a, know, that's how you start. I, I wasn't like I wasn't like three years old kicking ass but but like like six or seven though like smash bros i was whooping people i'm talking about like 12 year olds 13 year olds like they're getting their ass whooped but like i'm just gonna be honest like three years old nah i wasn't i wasn't out here just smoking people um that would probably be like my first one i played like i played so many games um, this is all like, thankfully due to my brother, I always give him a shout out whenever anybody ever asks me, cause my brother's seven years older than me. Um, he's my only older brother and I'm his only, uh, brother as well. So in the house, uh, he would have, you know, back in these days, there's no internet or, well, there was internet, but like, Dial not, up. <laughs> uh, not how it is now to where you're like gaming with other people. So when we were gaming, it was always I'm gaming with him. You know, we're link battling on Pokemon. We're playing uh, Smash Bros against each other, Tekken, you name it. Like, you name it. Marvel vs. Capcom, Super Mario, Son. Like, I played everything. Um, My first, first competitive game was i would say smash bros the the very first smash bros with you know fox and all that stuff um i would say it's the very first non-competitive as well because i never actually competed in like a smash bros tournament or anything because back then there wasn't really that it was more or less like i would get together with my friends and we would just play and we were good like we were really good um, the first game that I actually ever competed in tournament wise was Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was Yu-Gi-Oh. And that started I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh when it first came out, but once again I was super young and I I sucked. You know, my brother was good. Um, I always sucked. My favorite card back then was Jinzo. I don't know if you know what Jinzo is, the trap like the trap negator guy. But vaguely, um, I vaguely remember I played a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I used to love Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but I started playing that competitive, um, I would say, in about maybe when I was about 11, I think. About 11. Um, around that time, I also got into uh, a shooting game called Combat Arms. And that was probably my second true competitive game that I actually competed at like a top level. Um, that's also the first game that I cheated in too. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm, I'll be transparent. Like I actually cheated in Combat Arms, and I got caught during that time. I used to wall hack. I was also really, really good. I was always really good at the game, but there was like things that you needed to buy in the game and I never had time to grind it because I used to go to school. So I would just like wall hack and cheat and do that. I also cheated in like GTA too. But um, yeah, but I played combat arms at a competitive level. Uh, growing up after getting caught with that, like I never cheated in games anymore since then. And then um, yeah, I played Yu-Gi-Oh competitive, went to a national tournament, 
went to Detroit, played in Detroit. Uh, I created a deck that won like a world championship, which was pretty cool. Um, I played that for like 10 years. I played uh, Pokemon competitively for a little point where I used to do the EV training. Not sure if you're familiar with that stuff, but used to do the EV training. Uh, and then the very first game I would say where I was considered one of the best players in the country was Call of Duty. And that one, I played Call of Duty for about like 10 years. And I reached like a peak of top 70 in the country. And this is out of like millions of players. Like Call of Duty was huge back then. This is Modern Warfare 2 that I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, um, awesome. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that that was like the real first point at which I realized like, oh, no, nah, like this is this is fire. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I played Call of Duty for a long time. Um Quitting Call of Duty. I always played Yu-Gi-Oh! during this whole time. Uh, I quit Yu-Gi-Oh! And then I also quit Call of Duty and actually quit gaming for about, like, I'd say maybe about a year or two. And then uh, one of my homies was like, hey, you should try this new game called Hearthstone that came out. And I was like, what is it or whatever. And, uh, and then he told me it's kind of like Magic. I played a little bit of Magic, too. Never on a competitive level. I played... Um, it's called edh or something like that i can't remember but it's like 80 card decks or something and you just you play like big card decks i had like a green deck mm -hmm. it's like some big mana big minion deck it was something like that but um yeah i played that and uh i played that for about like three or four months i was never good at that just fun um yeah so playing knew, knowing it was kind of like magic i started playing hearthstone uh i actually started watching it first i will watch dog and crib afu all the og people mm -hmm. i watch them on twitch that was my first time really getting on twitch as well this was like 2014 ish 2014 2015 pretty early twitch. uh yeah the very first deck that i played was priest it was classic control priest with the rags and all that stuff um and then i stopped playing hearthstone i played it for about like two months and i was like eh, i don't really like it so i stopped playing uh then nax came out and my friend was like bro this new expansion just came out you gotta try it like just try it so i started playing undertaker priest and then that was the first time i hit legend i hit legend with undertaker priest got into it heavy got into it real heavy um, at that time, I was going to college and I had a job as well. So it was hard for me to like really compete. But um, I ended up peaking, peaking uh, rank nine in legend. And I peaked with Ramp Druid. This is with the Nax Ramus, uh, the Shade of Nax and the Spectral Knight. Don't know if you remember that, but like that type of Ramp Druid that was in that meta. I hit rank nine. Um, I played in the last chance qualifier for BlizzCon and I lost in the, the semi finals to the grand finals to get to BlizzCon. And I had to play at work on mobile, which was kind of uh, scuffed because I didn't have deck tracker or anything and I couldn't really take notes. But my boss was cool enough. He was like, yeah, bro, play your tournament. Good luck. I told him, I was like, bro, it's a million dollar tournament. Like, just let me do it. You know, if I can't have the day off, I'll run the shop, like I'll help out my coworker, just let me play the tournament. And he was cool. So he was like, yeah, go ahead, do your thing. Just, you know, if you need help and you can help, just get up and help. So um, yeah, I ended up losing in that. And then from that point, I put Hearthstone kind of on the back burner because like stupid decks started coming out, like Grim Patron, Warrior, and all <laughs> these different decks that were just like, <laughs> like, how do I beat this? So I stopped uh I stopped playing that like competitively and just was kind of doing life, you know. Um, we we had a question and, in the chat. What's the toughest yeah. competition you've been in? And it sounds like this one where you're in the, the this intense million dollar competition and also having to work at the same time might be up there. What is the toughest competition I've ever been in? Would probably be World Cup for Fortnite. Oh, that okay. shit was not nah, that was i wasn't in the world cup i was in the the qualifiers that was probably the hardest competition 
Um, and I'll, I'll explain that, uh, when, it, when I get there, I'm pr pretty much there, but I put a hearthstone on the back burner. Um, and then I started doing life. So I started uh, working at the post office and then I started streaming. Actually, I bought my first, uh, setup, which was like extremely overpriced and like extremely under delivered on like the quality of stuff I bought. I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I actually started streaming Hearthstone. This is when I met like people like Redbeard and Dreads. This was like four years ago, five years ago, maybe. Um, I started meeting them. We all had like five viewers. Like we were all super small. I think Dreads had like more, a little bit more than that. But me and Redbeard, we were pretty small. And um, I streamed Hearthstone Arena. I used to play competitive. I have like old trolled in clips of me streaming it. It's pretty fun pretty cool um and then fortnite came out and one of my homies the same homie actually was like oh no no this is a different guy he was like you should try out uh fortnite i know you like shooting games so i hopped on fortnite i played that for about a year and then i quit my job because i got really good and uh i started competing so that i placed 226 in north america west they have north america east as well but North America West, I peaked at rank 226, which I almost qualified for the million dollar tournament for that as well. But I just didn't make it, which is actually a lot of my life has always been. I've been right there in the competition, but I've just never made it or I've never won. Like I've always been. Well, there's like plenty of tournaments that I've won, like plenty of little tournaments and stuff. But I mean, like something major I haven't won anything major yet. I've only just been right there. So yeah, that was Fortnite. Um, after that, I quit competing and I turned it into more of like a content thing, which is actually where a majority of my community came from, um, was me me getting, I got pretty big in that. So yeah, and then after that, uh, I just came back to Hearthstone and I only, I only compete in these tournaments when they have them other than that like hearthstone leaderboard and stuff i don't i don't really care about that stuff because there's no incentive for me but yeah um as far as like why the the world cup was the toughest competition was because and i think it's important to note that your mental health is important when it comes to competing in anything and like just my mental health in that time mixed with the transitions i was going through in my life was very hard on me and it was very hard for me to play at that high of a level consistently in that state so it was just it was tough for me to perform at my best and that's why i would say it's my toughest competition but as far as like skill level goes i honestly think that cosmic camels tournaments are tough because you're playing against like nothing but the best the best arena players in your region so you can't uh make mistakes you can lose due to like bad RNG or like a bad deck, but you can't, you have to play flawlessly. Like you can't make mistakes. So I think at that level, I think Cosmic's tournament might be the hardest skill level wise, but yeah, that was the toughest for me personally was that, that, that Fortnite one. But yeah, that's my over, that's my overlook on, on competing in games kind of long but i've been i've been in it for a long time so it's an impressive resume yeah it's not just the like with cosmics tournaments it's globally not just your region because it's you know people from all over the world and arena is such a niche community because it's not one of the more popular hearthstone <laughs> game modes that anytime there's any sort of community event basically all the best players in the world are like oh finally something interesting to do <laughs> to do and they snap it up yeah but yeah you're right it's and that comes back to the flow state thing you you can't really make a mistake what about a what about yours time. well i i don't i have not done nearly as much competition as you i did some when i was a kid um i got through a few rounds of uh like regional spelling bee at some year when i was i don't remember how old i was but Okay. I got past the locals and then past the next one, and then I had a heartbreaking loss in the finals of. Oh, what happened? Enigmatic was the word. Not that hard to spell. 
but the person said enigmatic. And I got confused, and I thought, is this a word that I don't know? I know that other word, but enigmatic, hmm. And so I, I spelled but it wrong. You spelled it with an E? I spelled it with a with an I, I with guess? an I, I think, yeah. Uh, and, um... I think, that, I think there were, like, maybe three people left at that point. And that was sad, but... I don't know, and I I did other competitions through school on and off. My big competitive game was chess growing up. That game is, yeah, chess is fire. Yeah, ch like F, a, chess uh, is great. I have a uh, an automated chess board mm -hmm. that you you play like against the um you play against the board, and it like it tells you where the you know like move mm. D three or it, like it tells you where to move the stuff pretty cool i'm not very good at chess at all but it's it's that's another one of those games that really teaches you a lot about life it's so essentialized you know there's no random elements it's your mind against another person's mind it's very pure in that way um it, and i also had an older brother who was a lot older than me um more than seven years the difference was We've gotten close as adults, but when we were kids, he kind of, kind of ignored me most of the time. He's old, too too big of an age gap. Yeah, he wasn't like particularly interested in engaging with me, and um, because of that, I never had any sort of um incentive or prompting from him to grow in any particular way and i ended up just spending a lot of time by myself and that's a big part of the reason i got into chess once i started doing tournaments and stuff i would just go sit in my room alone set up a chess board with my chess books run through variations try to figure things out by myself and i do wonder you know i was hearing you talk and, and i wondered if part of why i didn't emphasize competition growing up is because I tended to be more solitary, did more things that just involved me exploring books or ideas or whatever on my own. And so I wanted, I wanted to ask about, do you feel like your relationship with your brother, because he was seven years older than you and therefore so much better at all these games that you might have experienced together, do you think that spurred you to want to be better in some compulsive way um yeah i think the the just the blatant answer is yes like he's always beating me right that's so frustrating at a, certain, right? at a certain point you get tired of losing so that will naturally breed um co the competitiveness in anyone like if you want to beat somebody and you just can't fucking beat them, you're gonna you're gonna do whatever you can to like try to get better to beat them. Like you're gonna get tired of it. So that's like the short answer. Um, I think, I think some, just ha some people would give up, right? Some people would say, some then, "I'm not even up, gonna yeah. play in the same arena. I'm gonna go do a totally different thing." But for you, you're like, "I need to, I need to get this thing." Yeah, I think mine was more or less um, just the people I was surrounded by were like all of my friends. We used to play games, but l there was only a few kids really that could compete with me. Everybody else, I would just mow them over <laughs> at, my, at my age. At my age, like it would be playing against other kids was kind of like you're not. This is like fun. It's just fun for me because they're they're not they're not my brother, you know, like he's way older than them. And he's like, I'm playing against, it's like you're playing chess on like a master level all the time. Mm -hmm. When you play against somebody who only plays novice, like you're going to, you're going to beat this guy because you're going to learn quicker than them. You're going to improve way faster than them because you're challenging yourself to the max level every single time. So it more or less became like, 
I still need to beat him. I can beat all these other people, but I need to beat him. Specifically, he needs to go down. You know, that's what my mentality was. So I think he definitely um he definitely provoked the competitive side in me. Um I think a lot of it was my mom too. You know, my mom always told me like uh she used to tell me like you you know, your life's going to be difficult. So you got to make sure that whatever it is that you do choose to do, you need to be great in it. And when she means like great, like I just need to be the best version of myself. You know, I don't have to be like the best Hearthstone player in the world. I don't have to be number one leaderboard. Those things don't matter to me. What matters to me is that when I do put my effort in, I need to play at my maximum level within that moment. And if I played at my maximum level within that moment and I did the best that I could possibly do, then I'm I'm good. You know, and I, I take that mentality towards everything. If I cook food, I try to give, make sure the food is the very best that I can make it in that moment. And then I'll improve later. But um, in that moment, that's what I try to do. And I think that mixed with my brother always kicking my butt was just like, okay, well, if I keep improving myself, I'll just get better in general. And eventually, you know, if he's not improving it, he's not staying on it, I'm going to beat him. And that's what happened. You know, eventually in a lot of games, like maybe he'd stop playing or um, he would do other things and I would pass him up because he stopped practicing or he stopped playing. And then, um, yeah, that, you know, that mentality is is the um, the core of competitive anything is uh, being the best version of yourself. I think practice is one of the most important things in life, practicing anything um, and then and then executing with consistency. And yeah. But yeah, that I think those things really breeded the, the competitiveness. And my brother, yeah, he was the, the kickstarter because I always had somebody there to play with. You know, I played a lot of games alone, too, but. The only competitiveness in that is like, can you beat your own record? Which is like, once you beat your record, it's like, what am I going to try to beat it again? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, but you kind of get bored. So. Yeah, he he ended up being a focal point for you. Um, yeah, I, I think my version of that was being smart, and I at this point in my life, I'm really not proud of it but when i grew up i had the mentality that the thing that made me special and that gave me value was being smart because that's what the adults in my life told me it was special about me and so in a way i guess one field of competition for me was school and like grades and grades were like a focal point for me and tests were the competition and i needed to derive worth from doing really well at those um, because it's like, you know, as arbitrary as the way we measure academic intelligence is, it's quantified and it's a way for a kid to point at that and be like, okay, I'm, I'm special. Look at me. Um, but I, I really love the lesson from your mother of like, do the best you can in that moment, because I think a lot of. I think a lot of competitive people are really self-destructive because their mentality is I need to be the best, but that, they, they, they get cuffed to comparison. Right. That, yeah. Cuffed to comparison. I like that. It's like, there's yeah. one way to be the best and it has to be me, but that doesn't take into account a million factors of, you know, did I receive less training because of, um, not being able to afford it? Do I have a different body than the next person and struggle to focus as much? Am I having a really depressive day? You know, there's no room to listen to yourself and your environment. And I think a really important part of gaming, you know, flow state and all that is being present and adding that extra clause of what's the best that I can do or be in this moment is extremely important for that. Yeah, um, 
a lot of it, like I said, I think practice is one of the most important things out there. And I think that when, when it comes to competing, the people being self-destructive on themselves, you have to take into account, like, if somebody's doing better than you, what accountability are you willing to accept for yourself at where you are in the game? Like I see a lot of players that uh, they feel like they should be on leaderboard and they think they should be on leaderboard, but I watch them and there's things that they need to work on that they don't work on. And it's like, you can't go in a competition and then beat yourself up about something that you didn't practice for. You know, like I can't go to the free throw line, shoot a free throw, <laughs> miss the free throw and be like, fuck, man, I suck. <laughs> when I didn't go and shoot 100 free throws before I shot that one free throw and then say I suck, you know, and that's where the self-destructive mentality is, is like instead of transforming the self-destructiveness into like self-criticism and seeing where you could work on your things, a lot of people just go for things and then they compare themselves to somebody else. Like, for example, me, <clears throat> I mean, you guys don't see it because you you usually shouldn't see people's practice. Practice is something that most people do isolated. Like you said, your chess, right? Like you would be in your room isolated. You would read your chess books. You would uh, perform these different motions, different scenarios. These are all things that only Blobby sees. The only time somebody else sees it is when you play that game in front of them, right? So like me off stream and me on my own, I practice a lot of Hearthstone. I used to watch people's VODs. I will watch your VODs. I watch Isher's VODs. I watch Stan. I will watch Dose, Redbeard, Dreads, and I would analyze all of these different people and I would see what each player does good and I would go to each player for each thing. So for example, like um, I really love Isher Woods drafts. I really like the way he drafts decks. The way that he drafts decks is very, very different. Like he he goes for a lot of funky shit, but he makes it work. And he's one of the few people in the community that I actually see that's able to do that. Like I used to go to Jummy for patience. Jummy's mm -hmm. like one of the most patient players I would ever watch. I would see him get fucking triple RBO'd in the game and not get mad. Like me, I'm turning the game off, you know? So like these are different scenarios in which like I would do these things where people don't see it and then they just see me perform in the game and they're like, well, why can't I do that? Well, you're probably not doing what I'm doing off, off of the screen. So instead of being self-destructive, I think people, when it comes to competing, you just got to do what you can to improve yourself and then compete and then if you make a mistake or something all right you could be a little hard on yourself but remember like no one's perfect like we all misplay we all make mistakes and you just gotta kind of take it from there but you know when you were isolating you were getting nice at the chess i mean you you were the only person seeing that work that you put in until maybe you go to a tournament and people are like well damn where did this person come from or this guy's doing work you 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 practice for that moment, you know? I think that's a, a fantastic observation about the, the iceberg of skill. As a, you know, the, people can see only a little bit, but there's so much going on underneath, not only in the practice, but also in um, your unconscious mind where you're like processing things while you sleep or whatever. It Life. takes time, it takes practice. And I think folks who see other people being good and then run into walls themselves can direct a lot of anger into one of three places at themselves. Wow, why did I, why am I, why do I suck? At the person that they're playing against, um, you know, they must, you know, insert some horrible thing here. Or at the cosmos, at God, you know, like, why does RNG have to, why do I get unlucky all the time? I see that all the time. People are yeah. blaming luck or the meta or anything that's out of their hands to kind of absolve themselves of responsibility. But I think the self-criticism that you mentioned, it can be hard to criticize yourself, but I actually find that that's the way to 
be generous with yourself is to be honest in that way. Because when you start to really look and admit you're like, I failed here. Why did I fail? Let's kind of unravel that. It could feel bad because as Salty Sea Dog says, we have a culture of instant gratification and it can yeah. feel like the world wants you to succeed right away. But to be able to be comfortable with failure and admitting that and looking at it, that's when you can give yourself grace and also learn about yourself at the same time. And the game becomes more about than more about just more blah, blah, blah. It's not just about getting good anymore. It's about a passion for the game itself and engaging in that, right? Yeah. I think um, a good thing, too, with, with the self-criticism is being able to take criticism, too. Oh, yeah. You know, I have I get a lot of criticism, too, from... There will be times where, um, like, my girl, like, I would... Uh, I'd draft a deck, and I'd retire it. And she would look at me and be like, what are you doing that for? And my answer is like, oh, well, the deck's boring. I don't want to play it. And she's like, but you just wasted like a potential chance for you to try to take something bad and make it good. Like you just wasted like a chance to take something that's not supposed to go far and make it go far based off of your talent. And then I would like look at that and I'd be like, well, but I don't, I just, it's not going to be fun for me, you know? And she's like, you know, sometimes it's not all about fun. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. in these scenarios, you should try to just do something you don't want to do. Like there's going to be times in life where there's things you don't want to do, but guess what? Still got to do them. So I think a lot of it is taking criticism from other people too. I think I've, I've tried to... I'll ask people questions because I'm going to be honest, like a lot of people these days are just too sensitive um, or just other people's delivery is not very good in which you can tell something, somebody about themselves. Cause there's only a couple of, you can only tell somebody so many things about themselves before they get very offended or they feel like you're, you're coming for them. But a lot of times if it's somebody who's, who's talking to you from a place of love, like you should really absorb what a lot of people say because a lot of us are oblivious to ourselves because we're ourselves and like you know i make a lot of mistakes and i can easily be like oh well i just won cosmic's tourney like who are you what are you telling me like you don't how are you gonna tell me what well, you know what i mean i could easily have that mentality or i could easily be humbled and be like damn, man, even though you've never hit the leaderboard, you could be right. Like, I made a mistake here, and I need to do better. Like, this was wrong. And I see that mainly with streamers, is, like, there'll be people in chat that'll, like, bring up an, a play to them, and, like, the streamer will kind of be like, nah, nah, that's stupid. Like, you're that. Instead of, like, actually looking at the play and analyzing it and, and going back in the VOD and looking and be like, okay, yeah, that person is valid. Like, that's a different perspective I didn't see, you know? And that's why I watch so many different players because Hearthstone's beautiful in that way. There's so many different perspectives in which you can go about a turn, especially when you have, like, 10 cards in hand and everything's green. When you really think about that, Blobby, how many different things, like, we just default to like, okay, this is probably the right play. But when you really think about it, there's a lot of shit. It's humbling in that one in that one moment. So you have yeah, to it's, like it's crazy to, to be to get to that next level. You have to be vulnerable enough to consider stupid plays because that's the only way that you can find secret brilliance. You know, um, and that. The thing you're describing, the defensiveness, the sensitivity to criticism, I have been encountering that for decades now in like writing and art making as well. And I and I I definitely understand because that can be really personal. It's a little little bit more touchy on like art and writing though. It's because those are more like an, uh, an expression, I feel like. So I feel like there's no real right way to write. There's but, like a textbook way, but. But I know. think great teachers don't teach the textbook way, but can still see what is holding people back, right? 
you know yeah, there's no okay. right way sense. to play games oftentimes either it depends on your style and your mind and and how it works yeah that's true and very i true. think that even though art is very subjective there are some like and it's that you could help people understand and there's some ways that you could show like hey this thing that you often do it's blocking this other thing that you often do let's try to cultivate mm. and whether it's games or art so often i've seen the first response to be defensive even from myself many many times i i had a, a really formative experience in college where i took a, a writing class and my teacher brilliant professor um was really straightforward and blunt with me and saying this doesn't work about the way that you write um you need to try something different and at the time i was like she doesn't understand what i'm going for and then like five, six, seven years later, I was Look reading a book on writing and something clicked for me. And I was like, oh my God, she was so right. She was so right the whole time. And I couldn't see it because I see, needed to protect myself. And now in that moment, had you have taken that, that second to just try to understand that person's perspective, that that five or six years, imagine how much of that five <laughs> or six years you could have been using to push yourself even further with the writing, you know? Very true. And that, and when, now you have to remember, like, I've had that mentality at a young age of gaming. So, like, all of the, the, the tips and stuff I would get, I've always tried to apply it. And it's made things, like, so much more smooth for me. And I'm trying to apply that to other parts of my life, too, because you can really apply that everywhere, you know, Oh yeah. just just in general. So but imagine, though, it's just like listening to understand instead of listening to respond, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us good. do that too much. Because I think where I am at with criticism, receiving criticism now is that every criticism that anyone wants to give me, I value. That doesn't mean I believe it, and it doesn't mean I think it's correct. It means that um, I I want to listen to it, hear it, meditate on it, and then decide for myself whether to apply it, whether not to apply it. It's just data, right? It's tools. And even criticism that you meditate on and ultimately decide is inaccurate or incorrect there's still a reason that that person felt like something was off and why they gave you that criticism. And you could still learn from that, even if not in the way that the person expected. Intended you know? to, yeah. Um, and the, I don't know, it, it, it cycles back to community and having a passion for the game rather than just needing to be good at it. So... I guess I have a final question that is kind of abstract. I'm trying to figure out how to frame it. Um, I, I'm, you know, you you mentioned cheating, and I I am not. I have no moral judgments on that because, like, we were kids, we you know cheat or whatever. Yeah. But you know, cheating is seen as taboo because it's a violation of the spirit of the game. You know, and yeah. And I'm, I guess I'm interested in that idea of the spirit of the game and what, what are games to you? You know, you talked about all your various competitive experiences and your changing attitude towards uh, like fairness and what is worth it and what isn't worth it. But like fundamentally, what is a game? Why is it so appealing to people? Why does it bring us together or fracture us or break us apart i think um very 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 um similar to you is like how you say that you're you've always been like academic academically intelligent um i've always been more like intelligent in a game you know i've always been extremely smart when it comes to a game and the way that i maneuver in a game the things that i do within a game has always been at like a level where people are like, what the fuck? How do you even think of that? Or like, how do you even do, you know what I mean? That's where my shine has been. And like growing up throughout my life, as far as like school, I've never done good in school. 
And it's not because like I'm not smart. I can, you know, I can do well in school. I can go to school. It's just a matter of like, like I said, practice. You know, it's all practice. It's it's study, you know. There's a million different forms of intelligence, which is something that I think we should talk about more. And school, I used to believe it was like the most important thing, but it's not. It's just a different game, right? Yeah, it's a different a different path, yeah. Some people are good at that game. Some people aren't. Some people choose not to be, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, like, with that being said, like, at least games to me more is, like, my form or my expression of my art. And I think this is kind of why I fell in love with Fortnite so much. Um, people who understand Fortnite to the level that I do, like the people who played at that level, um, Fortnite, you, in the game you build, you, you're familiar with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. how you build... So, like, the way that you build in the game is, like, an art form. And there's, like, proper things and ways to build in the game that are, like, correct. And then there's things that you can do that are your own. And, like, when you would watch me play, people would tell me, like, it's so satisfying to watch you play because of the way that you, like, it's so smooth. Like, it's so satisfying to just watch you play the game and i think that that has always been a thing with me reoccurring in every game that i've played like in Yu Gi Oh, even in competitive i always created my own decks i never played whatever the best shit was i always created my own decks and always competed with the best people with my own stuff so like that specifically, people would love to watch that because it was like, what is this? I've never seen this before, mm -hmm. you know, and that was an expression of my art, you know. Um, and then the same thing with with other stuff, too. You know, even in Hearthstone, I like to draft a lot of funky shit. You know, I try to if I can. There are some times where I'll strap down and I'll be that guy. Like I'm going to play mage and look for all the yeah. this stuff. But a lot of the times, like I just try to go in and have fun with it, you know. And um, I think that's really what gaming is for me, is it's always been a way for me to to show my form of intelligence. And I've always kind of liked it because at least growing, in, growing up in school, like I went to all predominantly Asian and white schools. So I never really fit in like with the kids in my school. And uh, like I never really fit in in general with in school. And then in games, I was always like way more advanced than other people. So I never really fit in there. So like, I guess the only time that I was able to really like justify fitting in was when somebody would watch me do something and be fascinated by it. Because then I felt like a sense of connection with those people, you know, but I never got that in school because I mean, people aren't watching you do your schoolwork. They just see you as like the odd kid out. You know, so when I would play games and people will watch that, all kids play video games, you know, so they could connect to me on that way. And even these days, like most adults play video games so they can connect to me at least at some point in that way. So I think that's why I always enjoyed it is because it gave me like that feeling of connection with people. And then be, then not only like once you're connecting with people once you are connected with someone, you can show them your brilliance has always been kind of like a win-win. Yeah, but that's what games are for me. You grew up in environments that weren't built for you, and so you opted for the path of building environments for other people in a way to connect. I, I grew up in environments that weren't built for me, but I always created an environment that people could feel free to join. And that's that's even what I have with my community that I have on Twitch. Anybody will tell you like my the Twitch community that I do have. I'm open to it, to people like we I, I personally don't judge people. I try not to. I mean, I'm human. So, you know, fuck. like yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to sometimes, but I try to be the ver best version of myself and not judge people. Um, and I try to be accepting to everyone. And that's just. Yeah, that's what I've tried to build always because there's so many people out there that feel like they have nobody. And when you just meet that person that 
makes you feel like as somebody, it just feels good, you know? And I just don't want people out there feeling like I'm so different. I can't, there's nobody I can hang out with, or I don't want somebody to look at me and maybe look at the way I dress or the way I talk or something and be like, I can never connect with that person. You know, I want to try to be transparent and open with everyone so that, you know, you make the decision if, if you want to communicate with me or not. But yeah, that's that's what I've tried to always do within gaming as well as I play with the homies. If you suck, whatever. We play the game. It don't matter. If you're good, we play whatever. We can have fun. We can compete, do whatever. But it's always just been my form of art. Yeah, That's I, what it is. I think that's really beautiful. And, you know, when people think about art, they think of like writing, pictures, movies, writing, painting. Yeah. Uh, but all of, the, all of those things are... They're just languages. They're different languages that people invest in, learn how to use, learn how to apply them, learn how to make, how to mimic other people, and then how to make things that have never been seen before. And that's all that games are too, is languages. You learn the language with your fingers, just like you're painting, and you can make things, build things, uh, relate to people in ways that folks outside of the community can look in on and and folks inside the community can appreciate even more. Um, and I, I've, I have a very broad definition of art for that reason. I think everyone has their art and, you know, I my, think uh, that, anything that grabs your attention is an art form. A relationship opinion, with your environment. Anything. You could walk outside and see somebody else walking and they walk differently than you, you know? That's like a form of art to me. Like the way that that person walks is something that's special to them that makes them them, you know? Like I, wa I watch my dad walk, for example, and I think about the fact that I walk like him uh -huh. and I'm like, damn, this is really like, I walk this way, like due to this other person. Like it's, it's just something as simple as that. Like people don't really think deep enough to like, look at these things but like almost everything around you is an art from the shape of a water bottle to the you know the design of a camera anything you know the design of your twitch stream right now is an art like there's not another design i can i can guarantee you there's millions of streamers <laughs> not one of them has this specific well that you have right here <laughs> with the pink writing you know that's that's something that that drew your attention and your mind relate that to the screen, you know? So yeah, gaming is just like endless art. There's so many different ways to express yourself within these games. So many different ways to play one game it just depends on whatever's, you know? Yeah. Speed running taught me a lot about that, getting into speed running, seeing the ways that people would break games and make new art with, yeah, almost absurd. He runs crazy, man. I see people beat these games in like four out, like crazy. Like what? It's, this should take me like. It's like what? you know they every game is a system of physics. It's like a pocket universe. You you people have made a new universe, and speed running is essentializing that universe for one thing: speed, and they can break and bend the universe but it's like to me it's like sculpting in time and space and it's just all languages and we use these languages to tell stories and that's our weird little human condition that we're living in <laughs> um, i wish more people seen gaming as that way though maybe given time because it's like a new it's... medium right it takes time for art mediums to establish themselves maybe someday there's a lot, you know, I, there was a point where I actually wanted to, uh, I try, I actually tried, I tried to go to my old high school at like the peak of my career when I was pulling a lot of numbers and I tried to uh, see if there was some way that I can get like a, obviously I can't be a teacher, I wasn't uh, qualified for that, but I was trying to see if I could, if they would work with me to do like an after school program in which I could teach people the levels of gaming. Not just like 
hey, there's this game and here's how you get good. Like actually teach people the life lessons from gaming and actually teach these kids to be able to understand themselves in a game. Because when you watch somebody play a game too, you learn a lot about that person. If you really sit there and watch somebody play a game, you can tell a lot. Like you can tell people who are temperamental you can tell people who are patient. You can tell who's somebody who's joyful. If somebody likes new experiences, there's so many different things you can tell about a person just by reading their gameplay. But like, you know, kids don't think they're not thinking like that. But if but you also have to remember, like these the educated teachers and stuff in the school system, they're not taught to think that way either. Mm -hmm. It's like something that was that's developed through like a single mind or or like a different person, a different perspective. So I tried to see if I can go to a school and, and teach it. But um, me personally, I just didn't do a very good job of executing that. Um, so it didn't end up working out. But might be something I might still do and and have like a, I would like to maybe get, maybe get like a psychology degree or something and and implement that in some way so that I can I can teach people because I think uh, yeah game gaming is beautiful and too many people just see it as like a waste of time which I could it can be sure, don't get me sure, wrong yeah. it can be but I think when you have the right mentality about it like it's actually one of the the greatest things you know, at least for me yeah and I, I think it's it could be possible for you someday because attitudes are changing and people are catching up with this new medium. And in the meantime, you've been doing that teaching and mentorship work through your Twitch channel, which by yeah. the way, for everyone watching and listening, it's twitch.tv slash chef Shaba. Check him out there. I really appreciate you coming into this hole on my channel and talking for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Anything you want to plug or, or say on your way out of the hole? Um... I guess I'd just like to highlight practice. I don't want to plug anything. I just want anybody who listens to this to just just practice on things, practice on yourself, practice on your craft, whatever it is you do. Somebody cuts you off on the road, practice your patience in that moment, you know? Take that moment to be like, is it worth me getting mad? Is it worth me causing a scene? Just practice the different things in life, you know? um and it'll take you far in in everything it'll take you far in gaming take you far in life take you far in school whatever it is you're trying to do art music practice makes perfect like that's that's all i want to say and if you follow me i'll see you guys on my stream thank you for having me yeah i think you know, one of the most important lessons i've learned in theater and gaming is failure is the most important and a very beautiful thing it's okay to be bad. Yeah. It's okay to be bad. It's great. All right. I actually have one more question sure. for you. You you said uh, being a kid. You said being smart like was it was like a you liked it. You don't like that these days or. Um, I think that I think that when I was a kid, I felt like what made me special was being smart. I didn't mm -hmm. understand that everyone has their own intelligence. Some form of... And I didn't understand that... Um, uh, that you can play in that rather than needing to be right all the time. And that really held me back. Mm, so you would use it as like a, it was more of like a, let me prove to you instead of like, a, this is just something that I have and let me expand on other things. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a, I think a defense mechanism. Let me show you why I am special and valuable. And if I'm wrong, oh. I need to pretend like I wasn't, you know, I watched this. Um, um, this is, I'll make it real short, but I watched this, uh, uh, not to like bring religion to the stream or anything, Please, but I watched this, I love it. <laughs> this church uh, sermon and the pastor uh, made a reference. And I think you would like it because you like art, 
but he made a reference with art and he said like god is the artist and we are all the paintbrushes and he said you start off with like most people start off with like some type of talent or some type of something which would be your first color so like for me my first color would be purple which would be gaming right and then he said if you live your whole life trying to draw on a picture of a beach and it's just purple your beach is going to be off right but if i expand my palette of colors and i use i let god use me as different colors maybe i learn music and then i implement my purple with my red you know i have my blues i do my yellow with my green you know i expand my palette i learn different things and i don't just let this one thing drive me then my beach starts to become more clear and my life starts to become more clear past and life starts to become more clear because i have different palettes of colors to work with and i just thought that that was interesting with what you says like it sounds like when you were a kid that was your shit like i'm smart i'm intelligent and in this moment if somebody's trying to put some red on my purple picture like hold on bro this is all purple <laughs> over here you know like i don't want no red you ruined but it but if you allow that kid to put some yellow on the sun you might be like wait that looks that looks right you know so i thought that was i just thought it was an interesting it was an interesting um analogy that that he had made and it made me think about like my gaming more and how like i wanted to expand my gaming into schools you know that's a new color instead of just playing the video game now I'm trying to get some red in there. You know, now I'm trying to expand it. Yeah, know? fear and goes along with that. Yeah, for sure. Because you know imagine, you're good at the purple. Imagine, <laughs> you're, imagine you're painting, right? You you like painting and your shit's looking great. And you're like, I could put some green on here, but I don't know. Like, this kind of looks good. I don't want to oh. even try to put, you know? It might be wrong. It might um, be bad. It's yeah. great. It's great. If it's wrong and bad, and then And you never work. know it. You you may put some green on there and be like, whoa, this just unlocked a whole new perspective. Yeah, I think I used to think that the important thing was me. But mm. I don't believe that anymore. I believe that what's important is what flows through me, whether you call that immunity or or whether you call it inspiration or passion or the Holy Spirit or whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it may be for you. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, well, yeah, thanks. This was great. Uh, I really appreciate it, Sean. I'm always down to, if you ever want to uh, do it again, any other editions of it or whatever, I'm always down. I like talking, so yeah, I'm always with it. I'm always down to learn. So. Fantastic. All right. Signing off. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, see ya.